Good evening and welcome to a quick distro review first look type thing. Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Beta has released as of today, Thursday, September 2nd, and I thought I'd give you a look at what's changed in it. As you'll see here, we're looking at the Ubuntu Testing Maverick Beta page. It says here what you do if you want to upgrade. Here's some new features. You've got updated packages. You've got a newer version of GNOME in the default version. Evolution's been updated. Shotwell has replaced FSpot. Gwibber has been updated to take care of Twitter's O-authentication, O-authentication apocalypse as a lot of websites are calling it. The sound indicator has added the new music player controls. And there's a bunch of changes to the software center. Looks like we've also got an Ubuntu one with more polished desktop integration. That's kind of cool too. Lots of new Netbook Edition things, new Kubuntu things, but today we're just going to be taking a look at the Ubuntu itself, 10.10. .10. So let me go ahead and just pull that up. Now, the first thing I wanted to point out, this is something I hadn't noticed before because I haven't really done an install since Alpha 2. They've made some significant changes to the installer. You'll notice up here in the upper left hand corner we have a volume control and a power button. I had not seen these before, that's kind of cool to have them there, though I, I guess there might be sound playing in the installer, I don't know, just in case they have that there. But they've changed the look and feel of this installer quite a bit, you now have these two buttons, they were in a slightly different place before without the, the big flashy graphics. If I click on install Ubuntu though, it says this is a pre-release of course, that won't be there in the long term, but it gives you this preparation info, make sure you have this right amount of hard drive space, that you're on the internet and you have a power source. In addition, they added a tick box to allow you to enable functionality for MP3 playback, flash, Wi-Fi, all sorts of other things like that. I don't know if that actually installs the restricted extras or not, but we'll give it a try and just see what happens. And I'm going to tell it to download the updates while installing. Liking this new installer so far. And this is slightly different as well. We have the ability to install the Linux side by side with whatever else is already installed, erase and use entire, or specify manually. I'm going to tell it to just erase it and use the entire disk. And then once you hit entire, it gives you what you want to install to, lets you to use the entire thing, or split it. I'm going to use the entire thing, and it's going to create two separate drives. Uh, looks like we've got almost evenly split, but one for the distro itself and one for home directory, I would assume. Let me just go ahead and hit install. And this is probably where things are going to get boring, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and I'll start back up as soon as we've got it installed. Well, the VirtualBox editions are not wanting to run on this machine for some reason, so we're going to just capture this small area. So basically, what's new in Ubuntu 10.10 Beta 1? It says here we have the new sound icon. That doesn't look terribly new to me. However, I noticed if we open Rhythmbox, actually get a music player going, it does add additional sound preferences here that you can go in and, and change on the fly. That's kind of cool. So, in addition to this, if we go into our internet, we have Gwibber. There's an updated version of Gwibber available. You'll notice that rhythm box crashed after I closed it. Not a big deal. It's still in beta, so things like that are going to happen. But, if I go into accounts and add in my Twitter account... Ooh, it's got Dig now. That's kind of awesome, too. Uh, and it's got Google Buzz. I haven't seen this newer version of Gwibber yet, because I haven't been using Gwibber much lately. But, if I add my Twitter account, we'll pause here. It did a little bit of communication. Let's see if it worked. Well, I checked and double-checked my password. It doesn't appear that Gwibber is working at this point. Maybe it's coming in a, a later update. So we'll move on. If we go back to Applications, we go to Graphics this time. You'll notice that FSpot is no longer there, and Shotwell is included by default. It says here, Welcome to Shotwell. That's all well and good. Photos, events, and trash are available. I'm not terribly familiar with Shotwell just because I don't do a whole lot of photo management, but from the last time I looked at it, it does look like it has grown and changed quite a bit, so by all means give it a shot. Uh, hopefully there is a PPA available to get this on Ubuntu 10.04, so it should be, should be available for those of us already using an existing edition. And of course if we go into the Ubuntu Software Center, we should see some significant changes from the 10.04 release. You'll see here we've got a history now, so you can see what's been installed and when. You go back to Get Software. At the bottom, we have the Featured and What's New tabs. These allow you to just go through and click to see what's featured, what's new, and have links to go see all of those things. In addition, there should be an option for paid software. There we go, for purchase. So far, there's only this one item that is available. That's all well and good. Eventually, there will be many more items in there. If we go in here, though, it says it's $12.95, and if I hit Buy, it's going to actually connect to the payment service. 
This is tied into Launchpad, which should integrate into your Ubuntu One style account just the way that it does if you're using the Ubuntu One Music Store. So that's a very cool feature to see, and I look forward to seeing more software in there for purchase because really, uh, uh, Linux users, Ubuntu users, they're not cheap people. Uh, they're just people that want to get their money's worth. So if they can get a good piece of paid software on Linux, I'm sure there are going to be quite a few people that are willing to shell out for it. But in addition to that, of course, we've got the traditional software that's available and all those fun things. And the one last thing mentioned was that Ubuntu One has been integrated more tightly. Uh, it was kind of integrated tightly before, so I'm not exactly sure what they could change. Let's just check out Ubuntu One. It's asking for my Ubuntu One account information. I'll go ahead and, and give that. Well, I tried connecting my Ubuntu One account to it. It doesn't want to seem to let me do that. It's wanting me to create one no matter what, so not a big deal. So basically that's pretty much it. You'll notice here we do have the new Ubuntu default desktop wallpaper which looks pretty similar to the one that was in 10.04 except we've got some orange splotches on it now. Let's see if there's any other new ones while we're here. Looks like a decent selection of default wallpapers available so that's all well and good. I'm sure there will be something different by the time it actually releases but for now, uh, that's just your first look at Ubuntu 10.10's beta, possibly beta 1. Who knows if they'll do a second one or not. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.